When we hire talent at Modus Create, we understand that we employ the entire person. That's why we believe that investing in soft skills is important for a flourishing company culture. Having been a part of many teams over the last two decades, I was able to identify five key traits of a star engineer that everyone wants on their team. They are simple enough for everyone to learn and exercise even in geographically and time zone shifted teams. Ultimately, these five characteristics are shared between the world's best paid and best performing engineers. I call them CATER. CATER stands for commitment, always be positive, transparency, empathy, and radical candor. Let's talk about commitment. When we pick a task we wanna work on, we commit to complete it to the best of our abilities. Commitment is the opportunity to show what we are made of. Think about all the ways users will be using the feature that you're developing. Consider the opposites. Try to come up with performance budgets. What about energy efficiency? Remember that you are the subject matter expert. The feature that was described in the backlog is the business case, but the implementation, the technical part, that's on you. When developing a feature, you may, and you're likely to, run into inconsistencies. Don't turn a blind eye. Try to fix them, especially if it's low effort. If it's not, you can always file a bug. But take some action. At Modus Crate, we like to follow the three musketeers mantra. One for all and all for one. Commitment is also about reliability. Your code will be used by other developers, so they need to understand it. It needs to be human readable. They may need it to base their future achievements on, and that's your responsibility right now. And don't forget about the critical aspect of commitment, which is time. Use it, but don't lose a sense of it. Always be on time. It's a way to show respect to the rest of the team. You know, I like the saying where committed product managers focus on building the right things, but committed engineers focus on building the things right. Committing to anything is far more comfortable when the environment is enjoyable. That's where the A of Kater comes in. Always be positive. It may sound silly, but I enjoy reading comments from some of the popular open source um, communities like React, Vue, Microsoft, Ionic, and so on. These comments almost always follow the same pattern. They are educational, clear, they show respect, and most importantly, they use open-ended questions instead of making statements. Let's consider the following example. This piece of code will break authentication. I think you should refactor it. Now compare to the following comment for the same line of code. Interesting point. I like how you think. I was wondering how would this logic impact unauthorized users when they use one-time payment as described in feature number 31. No matter how, we, how certain we are in our judgment, we should never force it upon our peers. Open-ended questions are an excellent tool for creating constructive conversation. They also show respect. For an added bonus, you should consider pairing open-ended questions with positive enforcements. Now, this is a great way to communicate whether it's uh, in written or verbal. But when you talk in verbal, there is one extra thing, one 
Jedi skill that you can employ right now. And I guarantee that you know it. You know it since the day you were born. And it's ridiculously powerful. Of course, I'm talking about smile. Customer service representatives are trained to smile when they pick up the calls. No one is going to see them, but a smile is going to go through the wire. It goes through the phone. We are able to pick up the total spectrum of a smile. Now, if you're a part of a distributed team, I guarantee that people across the world will know when you're smiling. And psychologists say that people are far more likely to collaborate when they smile. When you see a baby and the baby smiles back at you, you're absolutely going to smile back. No matter how hard your day has been, no matter how sad you are, you're guaranteed going to smile back to the baby because smiles are contagious. This positive environment is an environment that boasts trust. Another essential ingredient for creating a, a trustworthy environment is transparency. Imagine that you're on a team with a Janice and a Peter. Now, Peter has been struggling with his feature. It turned out to be more complex than he anticipated, and he's not quite sure how to handle all the you know, bits and pieces. During the DSU, he announces that it's taking a little bit longer than he expected, but he's definitely going to wrap it up tomorrow. Now, Peter is a little bit embarrassed and he doesn't really want that to show. So he says that he is making great progress, but he's going to complete his work tomorrow. Janice is also uh, having problems. And at the DSU, she says, I'm struggling with my issues. I committed all the recent changes for everyone to see, but now I need help. Who is available to help me with the problems that I'm experiencing on this issue? Who would you rather work with? Who would you rather to be on your team? Janice or Peter? Which one is actually protecting the team? Now, Janice said two important things. One, she said, that the mutual team goal is at stake, is at risk. And two, Janice's code is regularly checked for everyone to see at any given time. And this is really important. We all fail sometimes and you know we can't know everything. So sooner or later, or maybe more often than not, we're going to run into situations where we don't know how to handle problems that we are facing. It's totally normal, totally okay. It's also okay that we share with our team. That vulnerability that we share is creating bonds. It's bringing the team closer together because in, in problems, they're working together towards the shared goal. It creates a sense of trust through transparency. I've met countless of Peters in my professional life, and I can tell you one thing. Peter is not malicious. He is just afraid because he thinks that others are going to look down at him. Should we replace Peter though? Absolutely not. We need to show some empathy and help Peter be more successful. I was an exchange student during my high school senior year moving to another culture, another continent, uh, and learning to think in another language, that was all scary enough. But, you know, I wanted to play a sport because I, I was used to that, but soccer was the only thing that was remotely familiar to me. I'm not good in soccer by any stretch, but, you know, it was a great sport to be a part of. Also, a team sport. Now, during a game, I had a great opportunity to shoot and hopefully score, but I really made a bad shot. I missed horribly. I was so embarrassed. But Ruby, our captain, um, he did something that I remembered for the rest of my life. Uh, Ruby uh, put his hand on my shoulder and he said, 
this was a great try. You were just unlucky. Next time, you're gonna get it and you're gonna score, I know it. That feeling of trust and acceptance was like jet fuel moving me forward to you know the next play and helping me um, give even more than I thought I could to this team. It takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Ruby knew that and he was only 17 years old. Dealing with humans is not dealing with creatures of logic, it's dealing with creatures of emotions. Um, we are driven by pride and vanity. Empathy is a way of understanding feelings and enforcing or promoting positive emotions. I had the luxury to team up with Lenny and Charlie on a project that we worked on together. It was a um, research and development project with fairly relaxed um, requirements. Lenny was an extremely talented developer um, coming straight out of college. Charlie, on the, other, on the other hand, was a seasoned professional, but also new to the company. But there's a twist. Lenny had a medical condition that affected how he communicated, but it was totally okay because we changed the patterns, the communication patterns. Actually, everyone was very enthusiastic to be able to help this gentleman uh, be successful and feel better about it. On the other hand, we expected a lot from Charlie. As I said, he was seasoned developer and we expected a lot of motion from him. And it didn't take more than a few days or even less to realize that something is weird. Charlie is not uh, carrying his weight. He kept promising commit, he kept promising that he was gonna deliver, but nothing ever happened. We may have gotten some questions repeatedly, but it only kind of fueled our doubts. Naturally, the team actually wanted Charlie out. Just like Peter from my earlier story, Charlie failed to be transparent. That created a loss of trust, and naturally, the team lost confidence in Charlie. But it's not just Charlie who failed. It was also the team who at that point failed to show empathy for Charlie. I or anyone on the team could have asked Charlie's superiors to get him out of the team and, and send the uh, replacement. But how devastating would that be to the team? I mean, is there a greater sign of a threat that you can be easily replaced that no one is going to do anything about helping you now consider lenny we knew that he was having a condition and everybody did their best everybody struggled to help lenny right but we don't know so much about charlie now, being in a distributed team, we don't get a lot of face time and we don't get to read a lot of body language. That's why when we talk about sensitive things like this, we always make sure that the cameras are turned on. So um, I asked Charlie to jump on a video call. We turned the cameras on and we talked. I started the conversation with a few usual icebreakers, but nothing is a better icebreaker than active listening. So I asked Charlie a few questions about him, nothing about the project. I just wanted Charlie to um, get the feeling of, um, get relaxed and feel secure in this conversation. What I learned is, it was definitely new and that startled me, Charlie was a new Father. He had a two month old baby. Now that's a really big new thing in life. I immediately knew what was going on and what the reasons for Charlie's um, inability to perform according to team's expectations were, but I didn't quite get there yet. I needed to give feedback before we could talk about solutions. I tried to explain Charlie that we are a highly performant team 
and we expected of all team members to contributing with a similar level of commitment. Now using a confident but calm tone, I explained why I believed that Charlie's commitment were, were not matching other people on the team. I made sure to communicate the exact expectations that I had and that everyone else on the team had as well. I was radically candid. Accepting critique is very difficult because all we want is the feeling of importance. We all want to be uh, important and one way or another, we want our ego to feel great. Uh, this is a very hard moment for Charlie. He is in, in a new environment and already someone is calling him out um, that he was not performing well. That was very awkward for Charlie. So I made sure that um, Charlie regains some control. So we flipped the focus back on Charlie. Now, Charlie, I understand that you have experienced major turns in your life recently. And I know you're figuring things out. I mean, you have all the reasons to celebrate, including the new job. Now, what can we as a team do to help you be more successful and efficient inside the team. Now with that control that was giving back to Charlie, he felt more assured. Charlie felt supported. So we agreed on the steps that we were gonna take, including also a little bit shifted working hours and added flexibility. But I kid you not, since that day, Charlie performed better than anyone else on the team. And he was happy contributing to the project we were all tasked with. Now consider the alternative to this conversation. Charlie could have been let go or transferred to another team. Now, either of those are lose-lose scenarios. With exercising radical candor, we made sure that we give the exact feedback Sometimes it's brutal, sometimes it hurts. But again, it's up to our social skills to be able to frame things so that are more acceptable. Giving honest feedback, no matter how uncomfortable, is the right way to pave the road to a successful team. And these are the five key characteristics of every professional successful engineer. Cater, remember, C, commitment. A, always be positive. D, transparency. E, for empathy. And R, for radical candor. I exercise my cater skills every single day and I always see improvements. I invite you to join me to create an environment where products are created in a better, more fun, more enjoyable way where people are actually happy building awesome products.